Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, welcome back to the Behind the Convention uh, on Suara Kita Ni. Uh, welcome back to Suara Kita Ni juga. Eh, Balik-balik, welcome back ni. Alright, my name is Hazman. Uh, I think I forgot to introduce the first three episodes. Eh, no, first two episodes. Uh, so for those who doesn't know me, uh, I'm Hazman. One, one of the hosts for Suara Kita Ni. So today we are on the fourth episode for uh, Behind the Convention. For those who don't know what's Behind the Convention, it's a video podcast series where we're going to talk about um, uh, we talk about with the uh, core uh, organizers and the mentors uh, behind BYLC and who's going to be uh, there for the BYLC job. So basically BYLC any is Bruna Young Leaders Convention. All right. So without further ado, uh, we're going to talk with our guest for today. Um, so to talk about her a little bit is that um, for your information, she is the CEO for Smarter uh, Brunei. So Smarter Brunei is an organization where they help to and help to create awareness and educate people uh, regarding autism, uh, especially in Brunei Darussalam lah. So autism ni uh, is kind of like a uh, it's a condition where uh, there are special kids lah mm-hmm. uh, in Brunei Darussalam. So um, right here with me. Uh, It's Mala Didi, the CEO of Smarter Purnami. Welcome, um, Miss so Mala. Eh, Miss Kamis Mala Didi. Whichever you please. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's talk about yourself a little bit, lah. I think um, semua orang nak tahu uh, who are you. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> I think I think you you quite known, tapi for the listeners who sure, uh, yeah. baru akan tahu who are the CEO of Smarter Purnami. Um, assalamualaikum. My name is Sharifah Hadila, but my glamour name is Malai Didi. So please address me as Malai Didi. Um, a little bit about me. So besides being the CEO of Smarter Brunei, I'm also the Vice President of Smarter Brunei. I am the youngest Executive Committee member in the organization for Smarter Brunei. Um, I've been working with Smarter Brunei for 11 years now. Uh, from, I think as I was just... 19 years old when I started. Uh, but before that, I was volunteering heavily with the organization since I was 13 years old. And uh, currently, I have four children, <laughs> two of which, my eldest and my second, are autistic themselves. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. so Smarter Bruna is not for me just a job, not just my passion, but it's... Um, if I would follow what my late father would say, it's my fardu ain. Ah, right. My niat is really for my children and for everyone who has autism because I know what they go through. I know what it's like to live with autism day in, day out. And also, I forgot to mention, my brother has autism as well. Oh, I see. So, the the the, the autism… Um, Runs autism strong in my family. family. Yeah. So, it's, yes. it's really, you really have a… Yeah, link lah, like a big, well, a big, there is a lot no. of research going on. Mm. They do say that there's something in the genetics, but there's I nothing see. conclusive to say. Uh, so there's I a see. lot of research still ongoing. Um, they do think that there's some sort of gene that's mutated, but they can't pinpoint exactly which one. Mm. So causes of autism is still relatively unknown. Mm, I see, I see. Mm. Well, you, you mentioned you're the vice president for Smarter Gun. Who's yeah. the president? So pr- the president currently is Pengiran Zamri bin Pengiran Haji Bujang. I he see. has been with the center and the organization for close to six, seven, six, seven years now. Uh, he also has a son with autism. His name, his Anak's name is Azam. Mm. Um, he's a businessman. And when he was elected, it was due to that, uh, when my pa- father passed away, he was the vice president. Ah, I see. So it was yeah. a direct election for him to continue on my father's work. But I collaborate with him heavily because mm. um, as a CEO and the vice president, <clears throat> there are two parts of the organization. There's the societal and then there's the center parts. So the center meaning is where the children come in day in, day out, where we provide programs for them. Mm. So in those programs, it's um, helping them be able to manage and cope with their autism so that they can be fully integrated into society. I see, I see. So for example, the children under 12, a lot of them get rejected from entering schools because schools, um, they cannot cope with the autism ah. that the child has. They're either hyperactive, very disruptive in classes, or they are unable to focus during lessons. So what we do is we provide them with ways that they can be able to focus, how they can sit down, hold a pencil even, and understand what school is about. Things that, soft skills that they will mm. be taught in mainstream schools. Oh, I see, I see. I so, mean, um, what? how do you define a person yang atau autism? In, in, in regards macam, um, uh, But in their understanding, in their um, behavior? 
All right, so there's a lot of signs and symptoms for autism and classical signs of autism are typically, uh, so the if you go on Google, Dr. Google will say that it's a <laughs> neuro <laughs> about Google <laughs> will say that it's a neurodevelopmental disorder that affects a child's way of understanding, feeling, and it's mostly affecting the social skills. Okay. So that's why some kids aren't able to understand what a wave is or hello, hi, they can't respond back. Mm. And that's why some kids who are very um if you look at them, they say, like, ada autism, like, ada autism. You don't really believe them that they have autism. It may seem off rude. It's because they don't actually understand what the social skills are in a conversation or yeah, yeah, yeah. Orang yeah, yeah, yeah. So So uh, it varies what the signs and symptoms are. But the typical classical ones is that they're very hyperactive. And when I mean hyperactive, it's like um, running from one end of the room to the other end of the room. For no particular reason. La. For no particular reason, while screaming sometimes. Mm. So, ah. Ah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> just like that or bouncing off the walls literally or yeah, yeah. sometimes uh, they have no uh, what do you call it uh, no eye contact so they could be talking to you you basically could be talking to them but they're just like looking around not looking at you looking at everything else yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't have any attention span and majority of the time people say that they're non-verbal mm. so they don't speak uh, so my brother is non-verbal but he can communicate with me he can communicate with my family because in Smarter, we provide them ways with how to communicate. So what, what are the ways? Like, is it sign language ka, or through mm, texting or something like that? Well, we we develop our own program. So that's mm. what's unique about Smarter. A lot of people say what's so unique about us is that our program. It's taking the best programs around the world internationally and making it for Brunei Darussalam. Mm. So why... What's so different? A lot of people like, why is it different? What makes it different? A lot of international programs don't have MIB. Malay true, Islam Baraja. True. Memang, I think Brunei is the only one that has exactly. MIB. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? So, um, a lot of the programs focus only on the parent or even just the mother mm. in these programs, focusing on mother and child, not thinking about siblings or father mm. or you know anyone else in this family in the child's life and okay, not okay. thinking about the family. In Brunei, in one household, how many generations can you hold? That depends. I think Brunei is like really family oriented. Kan? Yeah. I think for me, I think my grandmother, then my mom, then me. So about three and generations. My, and my niece is four. So four, four generations. Four generations. And that's a typical household in uh, Brunei. Yeah, yeah. Kalau nya, even if you have your own house, nanti your parents come over, you go to your parents a lot and everything mm. like that. And we do rely on our parents to help menjaga kanana kami kan. Yeah. So that's what makes it different. Because if you do a program to the child, but not include every stakeholder around the child, yeah, yeah, yeah. it will clash, collide. Um, my father used to say, the grandparents are peguam bela cucunya. Oh, ngam. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> they can get with, away with anything. Oh, for some reason, my nieces are like, they're 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 like, True. So we need to be on the same, same page, page of the so same, same book. book. Karang yo orang ya. Oh, but semua semua <laughs> mesti same. Sama. <laughs> so everyone understands, and so that's really how Smarta runs lah. Ah, so I that's see. how my brother communicates through that um, application that we give. So it's called an iVoice. It's just pictures, and then there's the words. For example, he wants to go to the toilet. He'll say I want. He'll point it, and then take the picture of the toilet. Ah. And he'll show it to us. So very, he, he has to bring that around? Lah. It's around him everywhere. So All it's right. a very… Because some of the kids, even though we're living in a very tech-savvy world now, mm -hmm. some of the kids still don't know how to use the, um, you know, iPads or phones. And some of them also, kalau on the phone, ato, you know how technology can sometimes fail us? <laughs> Yeah, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so slow. when that goes away, what happens to their way of communication? It's gone. There's nothing. Ah, so that's why we go to old school. We literally have a, a little booklet that they wear around their necks. It's kind ah, of like, you know, the phone casing, yang lama lama. Mm -hmm. That's what we use. So oh, it's very, uh, very kind of, if you look at it, it doesn't look like much. But when you look inside it, it's quite beautiful. It's quite intricate and it has that's, a lot that's, of… That's really interesting. I mean, is it you guys make it yourself? Or yes, you we make it ourselves. We don't, um, because it has to be custom made. That's the uh -huh. one thing about Brunei. And so, um, a lot of people ask us why we're not spending so much money on this and this and this. And I always reply back because people don't believe in MIB, made in Brunei. 
Oh, the, the other MIB, all right. <laughs> so we want to invoke that MIB made in Brunei. So uh-huh. everything that we do is made by them, made for that's, them. That's and really, I mean, that's really interesting though. I mean, Thank you. Ada banyak I, really, I actually want to see the, the yeah, physical. Um, the... I can send you a picture of it nanti. Bah, nanti dah. Sure okay. lah, maybe when I get back to the office, yeah, I can share right, it to right. Emma. Right, uh, before we uh, to the next, uh, proceed to the next question. Yeah. Um, this is like a... Uh, one of the questions like we ask mm-hmm. to all the mentors and organizers for BYLC lah. So we have a paper and marker pens here. Oh God. Right. <laughs> so you know where this is going. So hopefully we're going to test your art- art- artistic skills. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> artistic skills. So, um, so our question is always going to be uh, like this lah. Draw us a picture of mm-hmm. Brunei in 2035. What do you think is going to be in 2035? I mean, uh, you can draw and don't don't draw the Brunei itself, lah. Yeah, Brunei. yeah, yeah. I mean, what 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 do you vision? What's your vision that you want? Uh, it doesn't Brunei? have to be a drawing. It can be a word. It, yeah, it can be a word. It can be a drawing. Okay. Up to you, lah. Uh, well, we let the audience judge, lah. Kalau drawingnya cuma nak. Well, the previous people, belum kami ya tu. Previous, belum kami showkan yet. But yeah, soon to be. <laughs> bit All right? scary. All right. All right. All right. So. Uh, Yeah, you can listen. Oh, right. So, in the meantime, while you draw, can can you multitask? Yeah, I can. I can. I can totally multitask. All right. Okay, good. Because there are some of the mentors and they cannot multitask. They draw and they have to stop while we, I answer questions. I already have my image in my head. Ah, right, right. For 2035. I see. Okay, okay. So, um... Atu je Yeah, it's very oh, simple. Wow. My <laughs> artistic skills are non-existent. <laughs> well, that's that's fast. All right. Uh, I see. Okay. I yeah. think I think we need to show the camera. All right. So basically, this I think this is uh, her vision is acceptance with a heart on it. So um, can you explain yes, to me what what is it? I know people will ask me what do you mean by acceptance. oh wow. what do you mean? So with my um, with my mission in Smarter, it's that. I don't only create awareness because awareness is only 10% of my uh, objective in life. Mm, I see. Because people can be aware of a lot of things. Um, but to accept something takes a different level. And a lot of… So I'll give you an example. Okay. People were aware of COVID-19. Very before, much. Before it hit Brunei. But, yes. Yeah. But everyone was still lekat. Oh yeah. And then when it finally hit, atupun batahkan accept sedikit ah. And then when it finally accepted, now everyone is doing the new norm. Yes. So with autism, it's for me, it's not just autism on its own. It's for Wawasan 2035 to really come into play. People need to accept the vision of Wawasan 2035. Mm, yeah. They need to believe in it. Right now, everyone's aware. Everyone, everyone's aware. Everyone's aware. aware. But they have they accepted what it embodies? Have they accepted what they have? what it wants to do, what it envisions to do, and what it aims to bring Brunei to. So mm. I, by 2035, I hope everyone has accepted it. Everything. Everything. Right. That accepted it and that's how you can move on to the next phase, which is action. Right. I mean, what's what's the what's the obstacle uh, in Brunei for everyone to accept um, the new norm, the, the, the mm. things like autism? Apatur. So I like to call COVID-19 and autism very similar. <laughs> Is it? Why? <laughs> Because whether you like it or not, you have to accept that it's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's That's one. Fun. Two is that people with autism, again, they have so many issues with uh, sensory, actually. So they don't like crowded spaces, loud noises. Mm. They don't like certain smells, certain tastes, everything like that. So a lot of the things in Brunei, because we're such a close-knit family, bayangkan saja ke tahlil. How many people will be there? No, there's a lot. There's yeah, a lot. usually it's a hundred minimum, kadang-kadang, mm-hmm. right? And kids with autism cannot stand even sometimes 10 people. So people are like, eh, susah cha nak mua ni, ah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that kind of acceptance. You're aware that they don't like these things and they don't see the point of hadir uh, tahlil for mm-hmm. them because they're still children. They're still, um, they still have their autism. Mm-hmm. They, still, they still don't understand these things. So when COVID happened, they were very happy to be around. Around, yeah. you know, everything's <laughs> online. Everything's, you know, you don't have to be in crowds and everything like that. So, oh, speaking speaking of that as well, um, since the COVID happened, how did the smart survive? Uh, survive. <laughs> like, they have to attend the program of the smart. Oh, uh, so no, we got closed. Um, as soon as the first case was announced, we closed down our centers uh, because at that time we knew the severity of it already. Yeah, I was yeah, yeah. very uh, caught up with the um, news about it. And 
a lot of us, uh, especially the executive committee, were very worried because we had a lot of high-risk students. So we closed down. And then uh, it was March 16, the government wouldn't ask us to close as well. Mm. So when we closed, um, it was really an issue because I understood that a lot of the money for fundraising, because that's how we survive. Yeah, yeah. We survive on fundraising. Um, a lot of the money was going to the COVID Relief really Fund, which is fine because it was for a great cause. But it also kind of died us down, as in we couldn't operate as much as we, mm. as we could. Um, I was, side note, very heavily pregnant at that time. So, oh, I see. Yeah, so I was a bit stressed out. So what, I, what happened was that I continuously kept up to date with news internationally and locally and tried to create an SOP that would work. And so... Everyone was doing a home program. Smarter Brunei and there the home program that dulu sudah. Oh, I see. Even before COVID happened, we already had a program that you could bring home. Mm-hmm. So I reactivated it in such a way that wouldn't be academic based because everyone was having their home learning packs. Mm. So I kind of made it more on let's structure the day to help the parents because parents jadi orang kerja nado orang jaga anaknya and then they worried about anaknya. Mm. So what would it be? be? So we aim to make our adults and all the other individuals with autism to be independent. So I made sure that they would be able to do things at home in a, such, in a structured way that would help them through their independence. So much like for example, my brother, we had to ask him every day, but as soon as you wake up, you go make your bed, you go to shower, you go have your breakfast, then you wash up afterwards. So every day this routine would happen until he would be able to do it without any instructions. I see, I see. And so a lot of parents are very happy because some of our adults um, end up now cooking dinner every time balik oh, rumah. So they're All the right. ones that are making the menu. And I so see, see. it makes them, you know, the parents feel much like, oh, I don't have to worry about who's going to take care of my son when I'm mm. not here. Mm. I don't have to worry about who's going to help him cook clean and everything, he knows what to do. For the smaller children, we wanted to make sure that it wasn't just bangun, let TV, makan, tidur, nothing. There's no, this empty play in that day. So what we did was we asked the parents every day, they would wake up, let them uh, have breakfast, let them watch TV, and then switch on Smart the Brunei's YouTube channel. Oh, do you do have a YouTube channel? We have a YouTube channel. There, um, <laughs> my colleagues are gonna hate me to telling this because Why? now everyone's gonna because we made guys subscribe guys <laughs> subscribe to Smarter made, YouTube channel. We made videos about COVID nineteen for the kids that's autism friendly. Is it is it it started masa COVID saja lah? Um, and like then we had a Smarter Bruna YouTube channel, but we never really utilized it because we didn't really know what to use it for in a sense. Right. So after that, I said we have our YouTube channel. Let's make videos about why washing hands is important, why we can't go out during this time. Um, what can we do to help stay healthy, then exercise videos for our kids that they're used to in the center mm. and using familiar faces. So it's not just Coco Melon or 100% oh. all the time, right? <laughs> dangerous <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so it's um, it's our therapist there. So they're there singing and dancing along see, to yeah. music, teaching them, hi guys, it's me, teacher, and enter the teacher's name that they're familiar with. I and see. the kids watch it very happily so and follow. So we also did a lot of online videos, Zoom meetings with them as well. And the parents were very happy because the majority of our students didn't feel like they weren't going to Smarter because we were just there online. Uh. But as soon as we were able to open, um, I was actually in labor when we were asked to open. 6 June was when Yang Bohormat Datu announced Boleh Buka Sudah Balik. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because on the 3rd of June, he came to Smarter. <laughs> And he, and he oh wanted no. to see. Yeah, he wanted oh to no. see what we were doing. So I was there, and I said, ah, "Alhamdulillah, we are ready." I said, "We are ready." <laughs> and he asked me, "Like, so, uh, Didi, how many people can you fit in here with social distancing?" I said, "Equal what the government had sarankan, thirty percent capacity." He said, "That's good. That's good." And then. That Saturday, he said they can open. So Smart and Pusat Esan were the first two organizations who were allowed to open. Mm-hmm. So because I was already in labor that time and my staff were not ready for whatever to come, <laughs> I did a Zoom meeting in my hospital gown <laughs> in front of the nurses you, telling them about the SOP, what they should do, what they should look out for and I'll be back in three months <laughs> after this. So it was um, that's how we did it during COVID. It was uh-huh. a lot of late nights, a lot of um, talking to my consultant, uh, who's my sister. She's doing her PhD in uh, UK right now, in autism. So she's actually in lockdown in UK. 
Ya yeah, ya, yeah. but I thought all the um, students from UK have oh, to come back. Oh, she's married to orang putih. Ah, so see. she's a she's no longer coming. All right. <laughs> she betrayed me in that way. She was supposed to come back. Oh, my lady, dia punya sister Lister. <laughs> I'll, I'll let her watch this. You betrayed me. <laughs> so she said it. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's basically what happened. Ah, I see. I see. So that's why acceptance. Because ah, I mean, I mean, that's a like a. It's really hard to like, Sometimes people can accept. Yeah. Certain things lah, yes. but all they are used to the norm. Yes. Like some, it's it's inside them. Some I think gives change them. Change is yeah. very hard. Yeah. Um, it's hard for anyone. Change was hard for myself. Change is hard for my children. But in one quote really kind of sticks with me. Um, the only thing constant in life is change. Hmm. True. That's true as well. So that's why for mm. me it was um, I kept to keep on reminding myself. Okay, this change is inconvenient for now, but will it benefit me in the future? Would it benefit my children for the long run? So, change for me, I welcome it. Mm. It's a hard thing to do. Changing yourself is hard. Changing your way of thinking is hard. So, for me, why? That's why my drawing is so simple because I only want people to accept, have yeah. acceptance, acceptance in their hearts. <laughs> Acceptance in, in your heart. heart, yeah, in your heart. <laughs> okay, there, okay. There. All right. Um. So next question. What's new with Smart? Anything like um? Can we expect uh, 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 something new? You can expect us to open a cafe very soon. All uh, right. Where? Oh, yeah. Uh, so secret location for now Allah. because I don't want people to serve serve while we're fixing it up. Uh, but hint hint, it's somewhere in Anggrek Desa. Anggrek Desa, guys. <laughs> <laughs> serbu. Um, the space was given to us by Yang Bohormat Datu uh, Aminuddin, oh, his son. So he's trying to help us out branch out because um, he uh, we informed him that our bistro current bistro and cafe that's located in our office that is just outside Sana, mm. um in the two years that it's been running has been able to make more than ten thousand oh, dollars and that ten thousand dollars goes into salary money for our students mm. for so our it isn't that the one the bistro where most of the students are running yeah running they're, they're, they're working there working they're, there, yeah. uh, they're provide they're baristas there's mm. some chefs bakers there as well so we do a lot of um, we have a lot of menu so right now what if people can expect from us is a new cafe which will be serving a lot of wholesome meals mm. um, we have a lot of new drinks coming up and this cafe will fully 100% employ individuals with autism I, I so see. they will have a chance to save up that money and use it for their life lah, mm. whatever they want so for example one of my students when we first opened our bistro and cafe in 2018 after about nine months of saving his money he bought Nintendo Switch Oh, nice. Because his parents are going to go back. Confirm, confirm. Let me work. I'm going to get my own money yeah. and buy my Switch. Yeah, so he managed to get his own yeah. Nintendo Switch from his hard work. Mm. So, Alhamdulillah, we want… We, we, I, not necessarily I want more of Nintendo Switches. But I, I, mean, want, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want more of the students to be proud. And they know that I worked hard for this. Ah, and nice. they can feel that sense of ownership and living life with dignity. Basically, what anyone would want. Yes, yeah, that's true. So. I mean, work hard for it, get your own stuff, not relying on other people. It's like it's kind of like a proud moment yeah, for, for themselves. Exactly. Like so this is the the next thing that you can expect from Smarter. Mm. Hopefully, sometime this year around June. Anggrek desa di mana? Skill. Nice try. <laughs> <laughs> well, kalau anggrek desa is not gonna be that big, so um. Yeah. You think not gonna be that big? No pulang. It's I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to pinpoint that. Like, kalau under uh, KKBS, maybe somewhere on the stadium, cuma tengok deh. So on the right track. Yes. On I'm, the right okay. track. Okay. Slowly, guys. Slowly, guys. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not in stadium. All right. right. Okay. Okay. Cut off stadiums lah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Uh, yeah. Sure. Um. So as you mentioned, tadi that. Uh, Fundraising is mostly what's uh, smarter generator on income, yeah. right? So, so I mean, what's the other secret for smarter punya sustainability and longevity? Okay, so we've been around for this is 2021, so that would make us alive and running and thriving for 20 years already. Yeah. So we've been around since 2001. Um, in those 20 years, we 
heavily rely on fundraising is one thing. But the other way that we get means of income is through the charging of our members punya centre fee, monthly centre fee. Mm. So we're actually monthly lah, huh? working on a deficit. I so see. monthly, I require $50,000 for Smarter Brunei to run three centres. And that's all on operational costs alone, not including maintenance costs. Mm. So half of that would go to uh, giving salary to all my staff, which would ha- which they are implementing the programme for the students. So they're a big part of my team. There's, if I don't have them, if I don't pay them, I don't have smarter. Yeah. <laughs> Almost say nada. Um, and the other half goes into paying bills, uh, paying any rental fees, paying, uh, what, do you, what do you call it, uh, equipment. So for example, we are renting out a photocopy machine. We're not buying one because it's too expensive to buy. Mm. So we're renting it. So every month we have to pay 280. Uh, also in terms of material costs. So um, every day can we have this, we have it five times a week, every day for a whole mm. day, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday till Friday. Monday to Thursday and Saturday. Coming ah, government. Yeah, government, all right. So um, because majority of everyone is in mm. government, right? So that money usually goes into, for example, materials. So I have, like I said, the little communicator that my brother yeah, yeah, has. Yeah. That one is all to our students. So we have to change sometimes the uh, v- visuals inside there mm. every day. So there's a lot of printing. There's a lot of laminating. There's a lot of uh, buying marker pens, pencils, papers, all these things. That it might seem small in small amounts, but we're accommodating 113 students. 113 now? Yes. 113. All through three centers? Yes. Mm, 113 students. Um, I have 36 in my adult center, around 8 in Kuala Blight. The remaining is all the small children. Oh, you have in Kuala Blight as well? Yes. So you have in… Um, Sungai Anjing. Sungai Anjing, then Mata Mata. And then Kuala Blight. Kuala Blight. Oh, Kuala Blight di mana? Kuala Blight yang belakang uh, building Telbrook. Oh, right. Or okay, uh, okay. Jalan, is it called Jalan Pretty? Or is it? No, Jalan Pretty. I don't. I remember. Uh, the, the, the. I don't know. <laughs> can, can anyone confirm this? <laughs> no, Jalan Pretty is in Bandar. Right? <laughs> Jalan Pretty is in Bandar. I meant um, the cut the post office di Kuala Blight. Ah, I see. Okay. okay yeah. Okay. So All it's right. quite. It's uh, that one was also our Anujila part of our center. So there's a lot of money going out to just keeping us running. So one of the other secrets that we do besides having social enterprises, um, when I say social enterprises. Plural. So besides the cafe and the bakery that we have, we also have a second-hand store in Bandar where we sell second-hand goods. It's a charity shop. So we sell… Where is this? In Bandar Ara Wisma Jaya, first floor. Wisma Jaya and… Uh, so, in Coffee Bean, you know? No, no, no. Uh, in front of Big Papa's. Building okay. in front of Big Papa's. Where is Big Papa's? <laughs> I know it's Big Papa's. <laughs> HSBC Lama. Oh, okay, now, now I get it. Okay. So HSBC Lama, Big Papa's belakangnya, bangunan depan Big Papa's itu. Uh-huh. That's Wisma Jaya. So uh-huh. it's uh, on the first floor. And we sell uh, second-hand goods. So clothes, baju kurung, uh, shoes, books, textbooks, all kinds of things are sold there. Oh. And so all the profits that we get from selling in our ch- uh, second-hand store goes back to the center to help us with our sustainability. So where do you get this second-hand stuff? Then? So we ask the public to donate. Mm. So um, we also do every three months a big garage sale. And our garage sales are very um, popular among a lot of people and a lot of people wonder um, why is it popular and do we really make a profit? So mm. I'm going to ask you now. How okay. much do you think we make from one garage sale? Give me a minimum number. I would say… Three days garage sale. Ah, no, three, days, ah, three days. Three days. Okay. Ah, 10K? Close. 9K minimum. Oh. Our maximum that we get in these garage sales are 14K. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, Alhamdulillah, that uh, our target audience for these garage sales are not just Bruneians, but they're also expatriates, also orang yang bawah the poverty line, yang just barely enough. They they have they have this thinking when they come to us, kesiokan membeli barang banyak atau mm. barang atau very good condition yeah, just yeah. FYI and we sell them very cheap how cheap is what I'm wearing this is baju kurung if one said Ani we can sell it one dollar wow yeah during our garage sale 
you buy three for one dollar. Uh, too bad I don't need baju kurung. <laughs> <laughs> Cara Malayu also same. Okay, okay. Baju office pun also same. Those kinds yeah. of things. Is it is it gonna be anytime soon? There's a um, so any? we're actually contemplating whether or not to do one end of March because we had one end of January sudah, uh. or we're going to have one right before Puasa. Oh, I see. Puasa is bulan lima. Eh, April, 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 13 yeah. April. So we're thinking maybe middle of end of April, uh, middle of April lah, cuma tu. Oh, I see. On a weekend, so we're hoping to have these garage sales every three months. And why every three months is because the secret is volume of products. Ah. We have so much things to sell at a cheap price. Banyak untung. Mm. So I see, I see. So yes. that's that's one of. Um, Many ways that you you guys yeah, help to sustain. Yeah, one of the many ways. So besides social enterprises, which is our bistro, cafe, bakery, we also have the secondhand charity shop. Then we also do garage sales and any other fundraisers that we do lah. I see. I'm, I'm a bit confused today. You have say bakery, bistro, and bakery. All, everything bistro, under one. Bistro, cafe, bakery. Yeah. Is it under one atau one outlet gitu? Yes. Tapi oh. they are um, when I mean. Under one outlet, it's all in this matter, ah. but they're all in the same area. Ah. But the bakery bakes. Um, so we have muffins, donuts, um, cookies. Uh, we also do waffles. We I also see. do uh, buns of, of all kinds. And then we also have the bistro. So the bistro has a kitchen where we make shepherd's pie. It's our best seller. And then our vegetarian pie for those vegetarian lovers also. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, so <laughs> <laughs> which is also selling our coffee and drinks. And Tita, okay, I'll okay. bring some. Can I, I'll can I bring some. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's very murah. Uh-huh. Just for a very small one like this, but generous feeling, $1.20. Oh, I love generous feelings. Dulu yeah. one dollar, tapi because of yeah, yeah, I understand. One dollar twenty now yeah. lah. But yeah. yeah, that's our best seller. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. During Hari Belia, no Hari Belia, Day of Action. Uh, in Tamburong. Oh, last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah last year. Um, it basically sold out very quickly. A lot of people bought it and they didn't know it was Yaman until um, one of my friends, Hazik, tasted it and he couldn't contain because he was very hungry. He couldn't contain <laughs> himself so he was like, oh, it's so good. And everyone was like, what? What's so good? I'm hungry here too. So, it was very funny and I said, yes, yay, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> An intentional promoter. Mm. Hazik, if you're watching this, thank you. <laughs> Hazik, uh, please claim. <laughs> please claim marketing uh, at a commission from Malay TD. <laughs> okay, another shepherd's pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, uh, okay. So, I think uh, we're going to move on to our yeah. next question. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure the writer, ni, Emma. Uh, he says here, um, I, think it's, I think it's a quote from you, Kale. So the end goal is to make sure every child leads a life that they're supposed to live and despite any differences that they have. Is that a quote from you before? Yeah, I have said that before. I yeah. said it before. I mean, um, from here, can you elaborate more? I don't, to my understanding that um, a child lives a life they're supposed to live. I mean, like in the... Well, the okay. So I think this was in the context of when somebody asked me, why do we use the term OKU and not OBK? So okay, okay, you means orang kelainan upaya, uh-huh. and OBK is orang berkepuluhan khas. So special needs versus different ability. Mm. So for me, with different ability, it's not just myself. There's a lot of people who want to use the word different ability and not use the word special needs. Special needs is is you can use the word special needs in contexts. For example, in education, a person with okay, you would have a special need in education. So that's why it's called the Special Education Unit. Okay. UPK, Unit Pendidikan Khas. Because mm. that is a special need. You have to change the, uh, the, main, the curriculum to suit the child's needs. Okay. But a lot of people use special needs out of context. And what, they mean, what I mean by using out of context is that, for example, what is so special about being able to access a building? And this is for a person who's in a wheelchair. Not a wheelchair app. Mm. What's so special about being able to access masjid kan bayi badah tapi mm. ada wheelchair mm. and they call that a special need. Bukannya itu hak asasi manusia. So when I say these things, is I know I know a lot of people give me that look. But when I say these, you know you know that in your brain itu cuma glass pacat. <laughs> what? <laughs> like it's the same thing. Like yeah. you don't have special need toilets, for example. Yeah, yeah. What's so special about being able to access a toilet? Right. Hmm. So it's these things that I want to evoke. So the life that they're supposed to lead, meaning that society un- 
whether we want to admit it or not, is disabling them, not being able to let them thrive because of these limitations and obstacles that we are not very much aware of. For example, again, masjid yang nada ramp ka, masjid yang nada this needs yang for people to accommodate to everyone. So, so having that in mind, that's what I mean by them being able to live the life they're supposed to lead. Mm. A life where it really is encompassing and inclusive and integrates them into it. So I, I know it's kind of barota. Oh, macam bukan proses satu macam... Macam I feel like I was wrong all my life. You were getting all oh, okay, you were too. I was like, damn. <laughs> no, but it's 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 something I learned actually mm. in 2018 when I went abroad uh, for this uh, convention with the Asia Europe Foundation. I never really thought of it that way until it was mentioned to me. Like for example, um, people saying that oh we have to be so accommodating, tapi accommodating atau they feel it's a burden to accommodate to them because banyak bekerja, mm. but not realizing that if you don't accommodate to these needs, you're not giving them their human rights. It's Yeah. So that's what I try to say that they're supposed to live because my child, for example, my my sons, if ever anything, I'll look at the situation and saying you're actually not giving my son his rights, and they're not living the life they're supposed to live. Mm-hmm. And so when I mean they're living the life they're supposed to live, they're supposed to live a life just like everyone else, where they're accepted for who they are, they are able to thrive beautifully in society as all of us are able to. And yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, I'm speechless, you know. Like, I'm open. I'm okay, you and OBU. OBK. OBK, so OBK. Yeah. Orang berkerpuluan khas. Like, in certain contexts, it does follow through. But then again, I said people take it sometimes mm. out of context. Like, they're not any special needs kids. What special needs about them do look? Yang you want to say? Uh. Like their needs are need. Is it hak asasi ataupun yes? It is a special requirement for them. Mm. So when I say people in wheelchairs ka or people yang have some sort of physical kahapa, for example, being able to read a book, that's their right. Mm. It's a right to be able to get education. It is our job to accommodate mm. to that. So that's why we have braille. That's where the special comes in. But to give them the right to read. Jangan karang ada orang cakap, ah, they don't need to read books. Pasal they cannot read at all. Pasal they are blind ah. or they don't they have a, a yeah, visual yeah. impairment or hearing impairment. That's true. That's what I mean. Cemarah juga di sini macam you know you know that feeling that you thought you know all these things then when you explain to me too I feel angry because I didn't know these things at all. Is well that's the whole point of what I'm here. <laughs> I'm trying to evoke awareness wow. to people, but not in a way that makes you feel bad. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. In a way that's more like, oh, I never thought of it that way. Mm. I don't want to pe- because a lot of the times people think that disabilities or different abilities topic is so sensitive and taboo mm. because orang cakap, I'm so scared of doing the wrong or saying the wrong thing. Things, yeah. Without any intention to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my role as a belia and as someone who's the CEO of Smarter is actually to help raise this awareness to orang-orang belia. When people ask me, Didi, how do I make sure I don't mess up when I'm uh, interacting with them? First of all, I will just tell them, one, treat them like you would treat anyone else. Mm-hmm. Two, if you're not sure, ask. There's nothing wrong. The worst mm-hmm. thing they could say is no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just ask them. So, tapi uh, jangan jua. Some people... I've met some people who be like, I'm so sorry, can I ask why are you in a wheelchair? Yeah, I mean, I, I understand that question pulang sebenarnya. Yeah. Uh, kadang-kadang you don't know the reason uh, dia patah kaki ka, Yeah, apakah. something like that. But, uh, Sometimes it can be a sensitive yeah, yeah, yeah. topic. So don't, like first time berjumpa, taros bertanya oh, tu. Oh, kenapa kaki kita? <laughs> kenapa kita tu? <laughs> you know, it's a, that, you know, pandai-pandai lah oh, read the situation, uh, right? Don't kind oh, of like, cerita dulu, cerita uh, kita, then, you know, get, uh, get to yeah. know that person. You know, yeah, it's, it's yeah. kind of like asking me like, why are you fat? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> aku pun payah jawab tu. Exactly. Kenapa tu? Kenapa tu kalau aku lompoh? Kau ada masalah. <laughs> Does it hurt you? No, it doesn't. So it's the same context yeah, yeah, I would say, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, read the situation lah. Pandai lah. Hmm. Well, that's hurt. <laughs> 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 but you get my point. Yeah, I, get, I, hope, get, yeah. I hope everyone gets my point. Oh. <laughs> Don't take this out of context. Yeah. But but I mean it's true in the sense of macam kadang-kadang uh, I have I have a cousin juga who's yeah. autism juga uh, namanya Rawi. Mm. Um, 
macam the first time I macam when I was small macam meeting him and macam yeah. I don't know how to communicate pasal macam I usually have like macam I require feedback lah. Yeah. Macam yeah. when talking to them macam yeah. tapi tema tu aku tak mesti macam yeah. kenapa macam macam apa kan what do you want kan macam tu. Yeah. Macam yeah. at that time it's really hard to communicate yes. with them tapi yes, um, of course. um then I noticed that bila dipajal macam macam balik-balik like asking dia orang they can be frustrated tu ah they they have a way to 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 show the yeah. frustration at all kadang-kadang um this way that like, you langsung don't wanna talk to me yes. macam kadang-kadang ia yeah, macam marah yes, macam macam yes. i don't know i don't know the, the macam reasoning why yes yeah yes. yeah macam i i do understand there are some concerns for those especially young ones at all yeah. macam who never have um encounter an mm. autistic person uh, yes, in their yes, life macam yes. lah. so there are situations that would yeah, be difficult yeah, yeah. Yeah. for me it's more on That's where it comes a bit difficult for me because mm-hmm. some kids are so eager to talk to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my son, he started off non-verbal, mm. but now he will, he will not keep quiet. <laughs> is it is it the one young autistic? Yes, yeah, oh, my yeah, eldest. Yeah, yeah. So I have two boys and two girls. Uh. So both my boys, my second, my first and my second one are autistic. Yeah, yeah. So my eldest loves to talk, loves to talk, and he can. If you ask him anything about Big Ben or Titanic or anything about. Airplanes, he can answer you, no problem. Ooh, he nice. can tell you when Big Ben was built. He'll say, Babu, what happened in 1859? I, I don't know what happened in 1859. I wasn't born. <laughs> <laughs> And he'll say, Big Ben was built. In the middle of the night, he'll mm. tell me things like, did you know that Big Ben <laughs> has a... <laughs> when you're sleeping. <laughs> oh, which, um, okay, good night. Babu, did you know that Big Ben was has a secret room? They do? Yes. Oh, you have to Google that. Okay, mana mana. Oh, really, Fami? Okay, turn around. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, he's right. Yeah, yeah, he's right. So he watches. He doesn't watch just YouTube videos or macam yang what other kids watch. He watches documentaries. Yeah, I think I noticed about some some autistic ni. Jom when they're into that subject or into they that, just love uh, it. they just love it. Jom my my cousin itu. Uh, he loves playing games and be on a computer at yes. all time. Jom gadgety lah, very yeah, gadgety. Yeah, very gadgety. I was like. Um, he knows these things more than I do. Um, he even showed the, yeah. you know, like a secret um things about the, yeah, um, the, tips, the and, yeah, tips the, and tricks on the phone. The cheat codes and cheat whatever. Codes. Yeah. I was like, I don't know what you're talking So you see, that's how you can engage with them. Yeah. That's one way. Mm. Finding their minat. Even yeah, yeah. you don't minat it. For oh, me, uh, I don't minat history at all. But, but now, uh, because of my <laughs> son. <laughs> now you know where, when Big Bang is exactly, built. Exactly, I remember <laughs> everything. And... It's also down to the Titanic. For example, he said to he asked me, "Do you know who saved the Titanic? Who answered the distress call of Titanic when it sunk?" I said, "I I, I don't." Bukan the Marine, kan? No, no, no. It's the Carpathia. It was a ship that was going along the route Jua that oh. heard the distress call of the Titanic, and they went to save the remaining survivors. I think I need to meet your son and <laughs> to talk about Titanic and all this history. Yeah, things so for him, it's it's that he he can he's able to do that. So even though I can't really talk to my son much, dulu lah ha, mm. about these things, I would start engaging with him with things that he likes. Mm. So my second son, he's verbal, but he doesn't talk a lot. Ye na mo cakap kalau you bring him a cakap. Uh, But he can speak what he wants. Mm. Like I can tell him, uh, has it? It's time to go to bed. No, why not? No, and then he'll just run away, you know. And I'm like, oh god. So th- that's the thing. So how do I engage with my second son? Is a bit more difficult because he's the one that's on the, as I would say, classic autism. Oh, yeah, a bit more difficult to engage with. Yeah, nonverbal, mm. don't know how to speak to. So with my son, I would more normally just say hello, Hazek. I talk to him like any other child I have. Say hi, Hazek. How are you? How was today? He might not respond. He may look at me, and I'll take that as a feedback. Mm-hmm. If even if he looks at me, I'm like, so you had a good day. Look at me again. Really, I have a good day. Oh, wait, so he look at me. So you had a good day, huh? And he'll just look at me like, hmm. then play with his phone. <laughs> then I'll look at him and say, do you want to watch um, Pokoyo? Yes. I was like, okay, uh, let's watch together. So then I'll talk to him about Pokoyo. So even though I may be sounding like I'm talking to a wall, I know he's listening because the next time he'll tell me Pokoyo, <laughs> and he'll want to watch with me again. So I don't know whether or not aku mendulur ya yang mendulur aku. It, it I think it's the other way around. Right? Yeah, 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 talk to them really like try to engage with them by saying hi my name is you know whatever um can we be friends they don't respond to you it's okay you try again the key here is to not give up 
Because like with you dulu kanak-kanak, you didn't know what to do. Now you're pandai main game. Adalah yang macam bercakap sedikit. Yeah. There's a bit of interaction now, right? So that's basically my pointers in life for autism. Never give up. Try to engage because like a lot of people, some I would like to call them that they have a lot of trust issues. They do. They do. And then uh, for myself even, when I meet new people, I may be an extrovert to people open your eyes when I'm actually an ambivert. After, but in crowds, I like to go into my little cave and just crowd, stay under my little blanket and crowd with my children. Like, oh. huddle, huddle, huddle. You like, what do you say that? Your social battery at all? Yes. It's, I need to recharge. <laughs> I need to recharge. And some people say, oh, maybe you need an hour to recharge. But for me, ever since having okay. a lot of children, a whole day. Or yeah, I need a three-day <laughs> weekend days, to just to recharge. So, <laughs> Yeah, basically. Alright. Um, yeah. Speaking of uh, running smart uh, and creating awareness and mm-hmm. services for the for the autism money, um, I would also like to ask who's your role model for these things uh, that motivates you to to run this That's organization. That's a very easy question to answer. It's my father. Your late father. My late father. Um, so a little background about my father. He had worked in Ministry of Health for 40 years. Mm. And 10 years he was uh, in the UK learning about and studying about uh, psychiatry. When he came back to Brunei in 1980s, he was one of the only people, or Bruneians actually, who had any knowledge or qualifications in psychiatry. So he knew what he was doing and he loved what he was doing. You know, he lived a lot of light, lifetimes before my brother was born. Um, he was dulu an RTB game show host for two shows. Apa tu? <laughs> Sayangi nyawa biskita. And oh. um, there, there's another one. Uh, something, Mari, uh, I forgot the name. But it was very funny game show host. It went on for four or five seasons on RTB back in the 1990s. And he was very, very popular lah that time. And then, he akan tarik balik ke... That time, we were living in Kuala Blight. Uh. And so, he akan tarik balik ke Bandar. And when my brother was born in 1997, everything seemed like a... Everything seemed normal until he was diagnosed in 2001. This is your eldest brother? My youngest. Oh. So, kami yang uh. bini-bini. I'm the fourth. Then my brother. Ah, I see. So, when my brother was diagnosed at age of three years old, my dad knew what to do because he said it felt like all my life I've been building my career for him because my dad was in psychiatry tahu what to do mm. knew what was needed to mm. be done so that's why he did smarter he made smarter it was also with a little help from because when he got diagnosed a lot of his colleagues and friends pun cakap niya, you know Malai a lot of families are going through what you're going through you need to help them because they knew my dad could help mm. they knew my dad because my father was well known in Ministry of Health as being one of those doers action people so he built smarter I was only nine years old when that happened um, yes side note I'm not even 30 yet <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um, so reason why he's my mentor is because before I entered smarter to officially work he had I didn't know his plans because he has so many plans. His plans didn't come off um, as transparent before, but he would always ask me and my sisters to join in smarter events. Mm. Then my sisters all flew away for their scholarship to do it in the UK. Mm. Some of them came back, two of them. One of them never came back. I feel the resentment. <laughs> <laughs> I love her a lot. I do. But she's my consultant. So I consult with her a lot. So um, when my dad asked me to officially work in smarter, uh, it was in 2010. I said, okay, I was waiting for my A-level results. Then A-level results keluar, decided to take a gap year before masuk uh, for U- UBD. I see. So when I went into UBD, I took a leave lah from Smarter. But I was very active still, much I'm helping with events and everything like that. Um, after my degree, I decided, you know what, let's just work with Smarter. I don't know what I want to do. And pun much I'm rasa, I'm good at what I do in Smarter. I'm very good mm. at what I do. So I worked with my dad. And... It wasn't until 2015 uh, when I went through my first divorce. Uh, so I was a single mother raising my two boys alone. I see, okay. For about five years. So um, when I was becoming, when I was going through my divorce, my father said, you know what? This is for you, you know? I said, what do you mean? This is for you. I am building you to run, take over smarter and run smarter when I'm long gone. 
And I was really not accepting it at that time because to me, I was like, oh, I want to live my life. I want to be... I was only 24 at that time. I was still very young, you know. <laughs> like, I feel you. Like, oh, I know, I know. Oh, kind of set my future. And so I was very rebellious. Like, datang kerja pun like, okay, datang kerja saja. And then my boys got <laughs> diagnosed. My eldest got diagnosed. Then my second got diagnosed. And then it dawned on me lah yang... Anika <laughs> Nita, um, my takdir, my life kana to list not by my dad. I should have never thought that my dad had planned my life. It was planned by the best of planners. Yes. And so I slowly accepted it. And so in 2016, I fully embodied this whole thing. And when I mean my father is my mentor, it's not just because he's my father. It's because I look up to him in everything. When we when Smarter was really dangerously close to closing down. Mm. There was a period where we didn't have any funds coming in. Nothing could happen. He kept saying to me, in these times, this is when you need to prove yourself as a leader and really do what you know what you can do. So my father showed me how to rise in times of adversity, resilience, the meaning of it, and always thinking of new ways to give programs to the kids. Because every child with autism is different. If you met one person with autism, you've only met one person with autism. Yes. So every child is different. So <clears throat> there was a time when we had this adult with autism who came to us. In the Pernah, go anywhere for any kind of program for autism. Just mainstream school saja. So he's never had any of his issues or concerns addressed. He was uh, just put into mainstream school or classes saja. So off the bat, a lot of people were saying that he's uh, quote-unquote aggressive, quote-unquote violent. Mm. My father said, don't look at that. Look at the reason. Kenapa yang macam itu? Pasal kanak-kanak macam ini di dunia, you know, sudah. They will not do it unless they were taught or it was done onto them. Mm. So the question was that, where was he getting bullied? Where was he getting hurt? Di mana ia in the kena fahami, not accepted. So, when I saw how, he, for me, at that time I was very young, I said, oh, macam lost cause ni, payah ni, payah. Mm. Within three months, it's a completely new person. I don't even remember that boy being aggressive or anything like that. He's lovely, cuddly, no problem anymore. And so, seeing my father being able to just shoot all these ideas and implement them, not just talk the talk, walk the walk as well, it really inspired me to really try to embody him in the sense of, I want to be like that. I want to be very inspiring to not people, but to myself. I want to inspire myself. I want to inspire myself to be better. Mm. And that's what my father always says. When he says, I don't choose or I don't want to inspire people. I want to inspire myself. Because when I inspire myself, I do better. So my dad was that kind of man. So I look up to him for a lot of reasons. And even now, like for with, during work, I'll always have secret conversations in my head. I'll be like, Aya, what do you think about this? And I'll pretend <laughs> to hear what he says. And he will shoot because my father will take my idea and say, all right, it's a great idea. Now let's look at where there's problems. And he'll mm. shoot at that. So he always trained me to be able to create a solution with zero problems in it. Mm. So when I give somebody feedback or when I think of, when I hear a problem, I think of all the possible scenarios and execute plan A, B, C, D. I always have a backup plan, no matter what. I see. So he trained me from a very young age. When I was just I can, nineteen. I yeah. can sense that your your late father is very is, is a brilliant person. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, yeah. through 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 what you're saying to me, I I think I've met this person before. <laughs> so I I I did a lot of volunteering with yes. you. Maybe I, I just forgot who he is. <laughs> but but yeah, but from the from presence, what, yeah. yeah, is quite known. He's a lot of people may or may not remember him, but they have somehow came across him one time. Mm. And when they do meet, when they do remember who he is, they never forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of that. So, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. All right. So I think this is the final question to ask. Um, uh, we're going to go back to BYLC. Lah, a mm. bit lah. Since you're going to be one of the mentors who's going to mm. be at BYLC. Any. So if, the question is, uh, this, this, just a scenario, uh, if you're a participant for the BYLC, mm. how would you make the most out of it? Oh, that's an interesting question. If I was a participant, okay, so I was never the best student in class. 
<laughs> I was always in my own world. Usually, in cakap cuma tu yang paling best betul kan? Cuma like a top of the class betul. Well, top of the class in terms of academics, because you can learn everything from the book. Yeah. <laughs> But never the best student for a teacher. Teachers uh, would either love me or not love me. <laughs> you know because yeah, I understand, understand. how um, I can be disruptive in the sense of. The teacher, ani ani ani, and they be like. Can you not ask these questions, please? Oh, well. This is not philosophy. <laughs> you know? So they wouldn't really like me. So um, to be a participant in BYLC, I would say to make the most out of it, not just sit down and listen. And the typical answers everyone would say would be to engage. I would say to make the most out of it is actually to do research before you come in. Why do research? Research on the background of BYLC. What is it there for? And then remember what this year's theme is about, and if you can talk about Wawasan 2035 and pick one thing from Wawasan 2035 where you feel relates most to you, and why it relates most to you. That way, when you come into BYLC and you hear everything, you can really be prepared, and that's how you can make most of it because then you know what the purposes you're going in, and you might come up with more purposes, more information. Because some people come in blank, True. in the top papa, and then because they cannot pinpoint a single interest, yeah. so you know, go back to why you want to go there. Go back to why niatnya you want to learn. If he was just saying, I just want to learn because it looks like fun. Fun always wins. Always. <laughs> but <laughs> but at the same time, your fun should be directed at what you love to do. And if you don't know what you love to do. This is the best time to do research. Maybe you're interested in volunteerism. Maybe you're interested in development of the uh, the infrastructure in Brunei. Maybe you're interested in this. Maybe you're interested in that. Find out where. Pinpoint not one, maybe two, three, and see how it goes during the convention. I see. Mm. I think I think that's a really an inspiring uh, quote, uh, Jumafa. So doing research. I think some people kind of going to like conventions, forums, and It's either because they're kind of mm. and I think because they say, "Oh, ani bagus ni." I just see what happens. Ah, uh, let's just see what happens. Tapi, you know, for me, I think it's always best to prepare a little, mm. and that's where you can see I'm also a nerd because <laughs> I always see. Siapa yang tahu cakapnya? class bni ye ne? No. Yes. All right, all right. Uh, I think uh, we have. Uh, do you have any more questions? Can you then? Uh, yeah, saya mau pencakap. Um, Uh, it's time up. So that's another one. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mane Didi, for those um, inspiring um, stories. Thank about, you for uh, having me. It's been yeah, an honor. I mean, I, I learned I learned banyak juga, especially the uh, OKU sama OBK. Macam yes. atau pun is like a mind blown thing. It's like <laughs> I'm going to use OBK a lot uh, next time. <laughs> <laughs> orang orang ber apa? Ber, orang berkepulauan khas, khas is uh, what is what special needs means, and yeah, then orang kelainan kelain upaya kelain is different abilities. Different abilities. Yes. No, I thought I thought it was the same. Then it's totally different after you explain it. I think I need to listen more to this um, kind of things. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe we'll join Smarter on one of the occasions. Can, oh, yeah. Can. We'll or him. or you can join BYLC. Yeah. <laughs> to listen more about um uh, Malady Deep's story regarding autism, uh, in Brunei Darussalam, uh, and Smarter as well. So, thank you, Malady Deep, again. Thank right. you so uh, much. So for those who are listening, uh. Uh, there is time. There is still time for registration for BYLC. You can go to bylconvention.com or uh, their Instagram page as well to a BYL BYL convention. Mm-hmm. So you can register. And also, don't forget to uh, follow um, Smart Brunei and uh, see up to date regarding autism. I mean, I, I can see that there's a lot of opportunities to uh, Smart Br- Smart Brunei on also autism and you can. Benefit and also uh, can be part of the vision for 2035. Yes. Because I mean, as you mentioned, the acceptance uh, is really important. Yeah. Yep. I mean, we really need to start accepting that um, they're the autism money are actually normal people, yeah. but which is a different ability than a yes. normal people. Yeah. Yeah. So, inshallah, alhamdulillah, uh, we'll be we'll be seeing you uh, more very soon. Yeah. Very soon, which is in 2030. March right? March, yeah, March 23rd until 25th yep. yeah for BYLC. Yep. Right, I think that's all from Sora Kitani. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode of Sora Kitani and thank you so much again Lady D for thank coming you. by. Right, everyone bye. Bye.